This is Witchbase News for Friday the 25th of March 2022. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week Frontier clarify their development update communication policy the community calendar launches ...there's yet more activity around Guardian sites and more. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and if you'd like to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. In game Galnet News reported this week that two megaships owned and operated by Taurus Mining Ventures were investigating some odd transformative effects on matter caused by radiation emanating from the systems they've entered. The article incorrectly reports that the heart of Taurus and the Musashi have both entered the Sinuf CER C216 system. In fact just the heart of Taurus is present in that system and the Musashi is actually in HIP 39768. Frontier have confirmed since that the megaships are indeed in their correct places in game but that the Galnet article is wrong. The article does make mention of Taurus Mining Ventures close ties to the secretive anti-Thargoid wannabe messiah known as Salvation. What it doesn't go to the trouble of mentioning is that the two systems the ships are in are both known locations for Guardian surface sites. It's a fact that Salvation employs salvaged Guardian junk to power the pansy smashing super weapon that we've seen engaged in recent months to great effect and by great effect what I precisely mean is it's made the ammonia loving caustic horror flowers utterly livid. So is the Taurus companies presence part of Salvation's further research efforts or is Taurus undertaking this work entirely of their own volition? It strikes me that anyone publicly choosing to refer to themselves as Salvation is likely to have such an ego that they'd be the first in the queue to claim any potential scientific breakthroughs as their own whilst insisting that Taurus were merely lab coated assistants in the shadow of their greatness so I'm personally inclined to believe the former rather than the latter. With the story of Elite Dangerous in the Odyssey era about to start moving forward again ...more on that in a moment ...just what are these two megaships up to? Are they perhaps seeing something at the Guardian sites that we've missed? Commander Eagle131 released a video this week that is the second of his lensing effect videos to highlight the videography that is such a huge part of the Elite Online community. The latest stunning video features the work of our very own Commander Rini as well as friends of the channel Commander Exorcist and Commander Two Fingers. Very much a labour of love for Commander Eagle you'll find the Lensing Effect 3308 and his previous equally beautiful Lensing Effect 3306 linked in the description below. For the best experience we'd recommend turning the lights down and the volume up and just drown yourself in the beautiful hypnotic visuals and music all skillfully edited together by Eagle. It's quite a thing. Yesterday afternoon Frontier Developments hosted the second of their new generation of 2 hour livestreams now called Frameshift Live. As well as hosing the assembled community on Twitch with more watch time with which to accumulate more free skins, tattoos and engine trails via the oh so complicated I'm not even going to attempt to explain it Twitch drop system they also used the platform to launch the promised community calendar feature on the Elite Dangerous website. You'll find the calendar linked below but in essence what it does is help to facilitate the discovery of the myriad of community events that are regularly held in the game and are such a big part of what Elite Dangerous is. Individual commanders and community groups can now add their own events to the calendar giving a central place for those looking to join expeditions, combat events, races or general shenanigans ...a one stop shop rather than having to trawl individual discords and websites looking for something suitable. The site only launched yesterday afternoon and is therefore lightly populated currently but it's expected that once the word gets out and more of the community adopts the system it will rapidly fill up. 
Senior Community Manager Arthur Tolmy again addressed the issue of console players porting their commanders over to the PC side of the game and reiterated that the company were looking at it still. There's clearly issues there that the company need to iron out before they'll be ready to announce anything more definite to the player base. As always as soon as we hear anything we'll scream it here. The team also took the opportunity to clarify something of the communication plan that we can expect from them going into the rest of the year. With the launch of update 11, the regular and frankly very necessary development updates that we'd seen throughout most of last year are stopping. Frontier clearly being of the opinion that Elite Dangerous Odyssey is no longer in the midst of its extended period of post deployment triage following that more than rocky launch in May last year. They did go on to further clarify that there is news coming on what is going to be happening with the game this year but that information is not yet ready for public digestion and they further underlined that there will be stuff that the team simply cannot and shouldn't tell us about as it will simply spoil what is going to happen. What we take from this statement is quite simply that there is more content coming to the game this year that we will be told about beforehand and clearly new content coming to the game that will be a surprise when it arrives. This very much echoes what we'd come to expect from the early years of Elite when the Thargoid Menace first appeared and it'll be interesting to see how Frontier interprets that kind of content opportunity in the Odyssey era. We're currently seeing an upturn of activity around the long dead Guardian planetary sites both in Galnet as we mentioned earlier in this report and the phenomena we reported on last week around the Guardian obelisks. We also think it likely that this all plays into David Braben's comments from a couple of weeks back as part of the console announcement when he mentioned the companys desire to begin moving the Elite Dangerous story forward again. Overall FDev's communication with its player base on Elite has always been an itchy subject particularly during the last year with the build up to Odyssey. We're hoping that last year was a watershed moment for the company and that they can learn from the positive strides made particularly in the run up to Christmas. They even noted as much in their last half year report to the stock market saying that development updates had seen a positive upturn in player sentiment. It's understandably a fine line that Frontier has to walk with a game like Elite and they admitted in the post Odyssey launch period that they haven't always got the balance quite right. As for their comms going forward, stability and bug wise the game is in a much better place than during Odyssey's launch and so the format we saw from last years streams wouldn't be entirely appropriate anymore. Right now I personally feel like the current livestream format is probably still evolving and finding its feet somewhat. The team specifically mentioning last night for example that they're still working on ideas around the news segments in the show. If they can keep addressing player concerns directly during the shows development segment as they are right now whilst also delivering spoiler free news of new content approaching the game then we'll be in a good place for the future. Do you believe we're about to see activity at the Guardian sites as a result of the Taurus companies meddling? What features are you hoping to see from the story moving forward again? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.